even if you have been into astrophotography and nerve and imaging for years, you may not know or even heard of nitrogen-2 emission line. It's just like the other commonly emitted em emission lines, such as hydrogen alpha, sulfur-2, and oxygen-3. I think it is one of the most overlooked emission lines, which can vastly enrich your astrophotography experience. Hello everyone, my name is Darwin, and welcome to Stars of a Rooftop. I'm an amateur astronomer living in a heavily light wood city of Seoul. In this video, I would like to briefly explain the nitrogen-2 emission line, talk about my experience using nitrogen-2 filter from Chroma Technology, and share some of my results that I've got using nitrogen-2 filters. And lastly, show you what you can get from narrowband imaging in only the red spectrum using sulfur-2, nitrogen-2, and hydrogen alpha filter. First of all, what is nitrogen-2 emission line? As its name implies, it comes from element N, or nitrogen. More specifically, it is emitted by singly ionized nitrogen ion. First, let's look at what nitrogen is. On the periodic table here, you can see that nitrogen is situated between carbon and oxygen. And if you look at how nitrogen is made in space, it comes from dying low-mass stars forming planetary nebulas and exploding massive stars, which corresponds to the supernova. If you look at the abundance of nitrogen in solar system or galaxy, it is quite high on the chart. It is the fifth most abundant in the solar system and seventh in Milky Way galaxy. Well, there are two types of nebula, emission nebula and reflection nebula. Of these two, nitrogen-2 emission line, of course, comes from the emission nebula. When you look at these structures of an atom, there are electrons occupying discrete energy levels. When the electron receives energy in the form of heat or light from the nearby star, the electron gets excited and goes up the energy level. In the excited state, the electron is unstable, so it wants to go back down the energy level, releasing energy that it just received. When an electron transitions from the high energy state to the lower energy state, it releases energy. If that energy is in form of light, we call it emission. Each element have discrete energy levels, so they have emission lines unique to each element. In astrophotography, we image mainly in these three emission lines, hydrogen alpha, oxygen-3, and sulfur-2. In the nitrogen-2 emission lines, there are three lines that are in visible light. Of the three, the one with the highest energy, it is too close to the sources of light pollution, such as high-pressure sodium lamps and metal highlight lamps, which are often used in street light. The lower two, they are too close to the hydrogen alpha emission, the difference being around 2 nanometers or less. Vast number of well-known asteroid images captured by Hubble Space Telescope contains N2 emission lines, believe it or not. Let's look at some of the images on the ESA and NASA web pages. As you can see, many of the images captured by the Hubble and many other professional and scientific observatories use nitrogen-2 filters quite often. In amateur astrophotography, the nitrogen-2 emission line is considered exotic but not really special because of its proximity to the hydrogen alpha emission line. Here is the graph that I adapted from the Astrodon homepage. Astrodon is also a very famous filter maker. And as you can see from the graph, a hydrogen alpha filter with bandwidth of 5 nanometers can encompass all the nitrogen-2 and hydrogen alpha emission. Even the 3 nanometer filter produced by Astrodon cannot completely block out the N2 doublet lines here and here. 3 nanometer nitrogen-2 filter they produce cannot block out all the hydrogen alpha emission lines here. So there are some mixed signals that are produced by these two filters. 
very large portion of nitrogen 2 emission lines are incorporated. So N2 is somewhat reduced, but not completely filtered. The nitrogen 2 filter, on the other hand, has strong hydrogen alpha signal coming, even though it's small, it's very strong. So places where nitrogen 2 signal is weak, hydrogen alpha signal actually dominates. It's kind of a mixed bag. You can produce discrete images that come from the gas distribution on an emission nebula, but kind of get both signals on both filters. So they, the results coming from them tend to be somewhat similar. I use the spectrophotometer to measure the bandwidth in my chromos 3 nanometer nitrogen 2 filter and found out that it cannot block out the hydrogen alpha signal completely as in the astrodome filter. What's up with nitrogen filter then? Yes, it is a very rare and very, very expensive accessory to have. And also it is not very popular. You can get the nitrogen 2 and hydrogen alpha together with the 5 nanometer hydrogen alpha filter. So why bother? On Astrovin, where many, many astrophotographers upload their images, out of 400,000 images, only 16 of them uses nitrogen 2 filter. When I bought my filter three years ago, I emailed Astrodon and Chroma Technology, whom I knew produced nitrogen 2 filters in the past. And Astrodon replied that they are not making nitrogen 2 filters anymore. But fortunately, Chroma has it in production, so I could buy mine from them. Now let's talk about some of my results that I got from using nitrogen 2 filters. On many large extended emission nebulae, images you get from each filter look almost identical, with some differences in signal-to-noise ratio maybe. However, there are enough differences in signal so that I can make some nice images out of them. On planetary nebulae and supernova remnants, the differences in signal become very obvious. And this is where the nitrogen 2 filter actually excels. Nitrogen 2 signal is usually concentrated in denser or brighter regions of nebulae, while hydrogen alpha seems to be spread far and wide. Here are some of my images in NHH palette, where nitrogen 2 is assigned to the red color and hydrogen alpha is assigned to the green and the blue. You can get combinations of brown to pinkish color and blue-green to sky blue color, somewhat HOO-ish by color me. If you add O3 and make nitrogen, hydrogen alpha O and HO palette images, you can get the golden yellow with the blue. And it becomes extremely useful when you are imaging in a very light polluted places like me. Because nitrogen 2 filters actually transmits hydrogen alpha signal, which is the strongest signal in any emission nebulae, it's always full of signal. Even though most of it may be from nitrogen 2, there will be some hydrogen alpha always present. So it will be different from the actual hydrogen alpha filter results. All three signals are the most impacted by the light pollution. Even on the targets with strong all three signals, you cannot really get a good deep picture of all three. Sulfur 2 is somewhat better than O3, but it still suffers from light pollution, and, and there's not much Sulfur 2 signals in any nebulae. A good example here is the spider and the fly nebula in the constellation of Auriga. So as you can see, that there is just no oxygen 3 signal whatsoever in this nebulae, in this region. Even with total integration time of 6 hours with 3 nanometer O3 filter, on a moonless night. Sulfur 2 signal is also very low, so when you make a SHO palette image, no channel mixing, you will probably get very green results like this. I tend not to desaturate mixed channels or destroy the green signals in my SHO images and try to stay true to the actual gas distribution, unless the balance is absolutely off. So a rather greenish images like this Pelican Nebula that I took is just beautiful to me, but it may not so to some of you. If it is just too green for you to take, you may try out imaging everything in red channels, S2, N2, and hydrogen alpha, and try some channel mixing, like the forex combination developed by the username The Coldest Night. What the forex combination really do is a dynamic way of mixing SHO and HOO palette. The equations in the 4x combination decides whether to bring out a SHO-like image or HOO-like image by comparing the signals 
from O3 and hydrogen alpha. The actual math behind this 4x combination is actually somewhat complicated, so we may refer to an excellent video made by Paul Lehman Astro. I'll have the links down below in the description, so you may go there and check it out. Although 4x combination is designed for SHO images, it really worked well on my SNH images that I make from sulfur 2, nitrogen 2, and hydrogen alpha. This process boosts the weak S2 signal and make all color channels more balanced, giving rich and unique look to the finished image. So here's the sped up video of me setting up my imaging program and myself post-processing the results. At the end of the video, I'll show you SNH 4x images of the spider and the fly nebulae and the flaming star nebulae. So enjoy, feel free to leave any comments or questions down below and Happy New Year! See you later!